All right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to what is this week eight? Week sadness. Yeah, week week whatever is it done yet? Um, <laughs> Bears lose to the Forty Niners. What was it? Thirty three twenty something. Twenty two. Twenty two. Thirty three twenty two. Two. Uh, well. Let's look at the positives of this game. Um, one, Matt Nagy had nothing to do with the offense, uh, and it clearly looked better. It was very obvious. It looked better. Justin Fields looked better. Uh, everyone's probably seen the touchdown that he had on his feet. It was an incredible play. I mean, that's just that 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 type of play is something that the Bears have not had ever at the quarterback position. That's right. just that's just something that is like has never really been possible, um, and and that, like, that play was special, and clearly, um, I like you know I know Bill Lazor has been calling plays for the past couple of weeks or whatever, but I think it's very obvious when Matt Nagy is able to influence the you know the game plan still, and um. It it clearly like I, there was such a difference in the way Justin was able to not able to but like just had a bit of a bit more of a um intuition to use his feet right and not stay in the pocket and take sacks and you know like I this is what I've been wanting from him for a while is like you can have your first read maybe your second read. After that, I want you to be the best af- best athlete on the field because you are the best athlete on the field pretty much at any time. You're the fastest guy in the field unless like Tyree Kill is on the f- same field as you. Um, I mean, at least I mean, in terms of the defensive side of things, you're probably not going to find a guy that's faster than him when he's on the field. Yeah, right? I mean, unless you're getting a you know stud corner, but even yeah. then, I mean, that situation you're already yeah, like when he's secondary. when he's on the field and he's on the offensive side of the ball. He's the best athlete on the field. And especially with, you know, the struggles that the Bears off the line has had, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't I don't want him to sit there and, and take first, second, third read. I want him to take, like, the first read. And even after that, dude, first read, pff, dude, use your feet. Go make a play because you can do it. Obviously, the problem with that is, like, you learn, you know, you, you, you start to kind of go into, like, Lamar territory where it's like, okay, well, literally any play, Lamar could just have his season done. Right, and it's a lot of wear and tear. But I don't know, dude. I, I like it's talented, bro. I mean, nothing else you can really say about it at this point. Yeah, like, like, like I said before we started recording, but this was this was like the perfect game. Uh, if we had a first round pick, it, it would have been a perfect game if we had a first round pick because obviously you want to lose so you can get a better pick and you want your rookie quarterback to look like a stud. Unfortunately, we don't have a pick, so losing kind of just is useless and we should not have lost that game uh, at all giving up 30 plus points to that 49ers team is is abysmal to be honest with you um the 49ers are not a very good team i I don't really understand why people are very high on them at least offensively speaking their defense is pretty solid yeah their defense is good their their defense is good even with even with depleted depth oh yeah yeah yeah. the the defense is good but offensively get there there's no reason that the, the bears defense should have given up 30 plus points to that even with khalil mack out of the game, which I, I the Bears were clearly, um, you know, missing Khalil, but still no reason to give up thirty plus points in that game. Right. Um, I mean, I <laughs> this is just frustrating. Yeah, I mean, week in and week out, I mean, it's like you see these flashes of like great things on the field, but then they just get marred by consistent like boneheaded plays with the the screen like there's no reason that guy should have got 80 yards on a screen oh yeah 100 like that. Like, that, that was that was really just know, meant to create some space to punt right like, it wasn't even right. you know yeah it, it's it's just like these mental errors that you're seeing and it's just consistently shows that it's just the coaching's inability to get the players bought in and mm-hmm. you know they're I mean, they played a little better with Nagy not being there. I think that definitely contributed to them having a little bit more of, you know, gusto in the way that they played. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just these players aren't bought into this anymore. They're all 
you know, checked out. They're all just kind of going through the motions at this point, waiting for the offseason. You can kind of already tell that. I mean, yeah, you know, you have your your flash plays here and there, but I mean, outside of that, it, there's no one is giving a hundred percent effort on every single. At least play. that's what it feels like. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, there's, you know, there may be sixty percent of them doing it, and then the next, you know, you know, you don't know what you're gonna get. I mean, which hey. You know, Team Hicks, though, that dude was hustling. Oh, bro. yeah. He was making oh, yeah. tackles like 20 or 30 oh, yeah. yards downfield. Dog. Dog. I, I like, obviously, I'm sure the, the guys in there are giving effort, but this is just something that I feel like it, it's it's the little things. I swear. Like, the, the little things are is what kills the bears like 90% of the time. Like they're like basic basic shit. Like just certain tackles or you know uh like catching the football in in like not not even big moments. I'm not even talking about like a big you know 40 plus yard player or something like that. I'm just talking about like pulling the fucking football on a third and 6 to convert it or something. You know like or you know fucking catching the football and not bounce it off your hands so it's intercepted from your quarterback like it's it's stuff like that like the the little things is always just for some reason i i I don't know why this team can't do it consistently it makes no sense um i mean they did it back in 2018 but uh, you know you kind of have to wonder what what was that difference you know what i mean oh i think well yeah that i mean that year you had um, I don't know. I I think it was just a new coach. Yeah, and like Matt's in his first year, you know, you're able to bring in like a kind of a finicky offense that no one's really seen before. You can switch it up and uh, you know, confuse teams easily and whatnot. Plus, like players loved Mitch too. Sure. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure players love Justin now, but like Mitch, I mean, say what you want about Mitch, but he is, there wasn't ever like a question of like his work, work ethic or anything like that. I mean, there was, you know, no. never a question of that. The players loved him. They, they, the players wanted him really to more succeed than anybody. I think they, they wanted him to be good so badly. Right. Um, right. and I don't know. Yeah. That, that team, that team was just different. I mean, now, now you got like, I don't know, dude. Well, I, well, at the time we're recording this, uh, trade deadline's already passed. Uh, so obviously the Bears have done nothing. Um, yeah, we haven't. I'm kind of, I mean, I expect. Yeah, that. I feel like we all expected that. I mean, they should have been sellers. They should have. They should have got rid of Robinson. They, they should have got rid of Robinson. I mean. They should have got probably. Yeah, the hundred percent. I mean, I think getting rid of like Khalil Mack and those guys would have been completely unrealistic. But Robinson, one hundred percent was a very movable piece and you should have moved him. Uh also Andy Dalton. Yeah, um man. I would I like if 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 Ryan Pace didn't give a call to the Saints, I would fire him. If oh, sure it, he if, he, if he if he at I mean, least he came from there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. That's that's where he came from. So Which sure honestly like if I I mean I was I was talking about this the other day like cuz obviously James James Winston has the ACL which I know they're they're ta- apparently they're or Philip Rivers is open to have a conversation or whatever, but like I, Andy Dalton would make a lot of sense for that team, actually. Wouldn't be bad. Would make, would make, I mean, he he can do really what Jameis is doing right now, except he's Andy Dalton and he's smarter, and he doesn't turn the ball over as much as Jameis does. Jameis, Jameis does what Carson Wentz does, man. Where he just kind of there's times where he just chucks the fucking ball for no reason, and I I'm like Carson Wentz probably has the most awful looking interceptions I've ever seen. Oh, dude, they're you see, like, like, I just like I don't. Like th- there are times I'm just like I just don't know what you're doing. I I'm no- and Jameis Winston does that sometimes too, where he just like he just chucks the ball and it's it's like I, I don't know. Get you a solid thirty for thirty, baby. Yeah, like Andy Dalton would have been a perfect fit. Obviously, the Bears didn't move him because I'm sure if they could have moved either Dalton or Foles, they probably would have. Because obviously, having both of them just makes no sense. You're literally paying Nick Foles nine million dollars to not even suit up at the games. Right. Um. You know, the sad know, reality is they're probably sitting there still thinking, we're three and five. I mean, it's an extra game in the season. Well, 
they're probably still thinking they have a shot. At oh, hundred percent. They, they probably do, think that. It's like so yeah. sad because well, they shouldn't be. They should not be a team. No, they that's they, they should not right be now. in the, the. You know what? You know what team is keeping the Bears like afloat and for some reason giving them false hope because I don't know ah. how this team is fucking. I don't know what's happening with them. It makes no sense the to me. The Vikings, dude. The Vikings are keeping the Bears in this. I have no idea how the Vikings are three and five. I would argue that Zimmer is the only other coach that is so deep on the hot seat outside of Nagy. Oh and yeah, it's yeah, kind of ridiculous. Yeah. I like. I, I don't. Mean, I really. Cooper Rush honestly played fine. You know, he didn't do anything special. He also didn't lose the game for you. Which is really when a backup quarterback comes in, that's really all you can ask for as a head coach. Right. I mean, in my eyes, right. like you just don't want like if a backup quarterback goes in there, doesn't lose you the ball game, but keeps you in it. Like that's all you can really ask for. I mean, yeah, that's and why the the Bills kept kept Mitch. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And I mean, <laughs> Vikings should have won that game though. Not even close. I, I like I don't. Yeah. They have no business losing that game with with. No deck. I mean, is in the Vikings. What's crazy is the Vikings are like a couple plays from legitimately being week. like like well every single week they they're like a couple plays away from being like seven and one. They're yeah. also a couple plays from being one and seven. It's right. like it makes that team is just weird. I don't know how that works. They're so talented. And and right. I, I don't know how that's going down. But anyway, they're keeping the Bears in it. Absolutely. And they'll probably continue I mean, to keep the Bears in it. Um, I do think this week against the Steelers, though, is like... I think it's like a must-win. Like, must, yeah, must-win. You don't win this. There's You pretty much shoot yourself down 50% on your chances. Yeah, I mean, like, there's there's is... already a pretty slim chance. But if you lose against the Steelers here, especially with the remainder game, rema- uh, remaining games that you have with, like... Uh, I think you got the Ravens the following week. Uh, we got the Cardinals yeah. later. That's you know, be tough. we still got two games with the Vikings. Yeah. Uh, got another Packers game. Uh, like <laughs> you know, it's not not easy schedule. The Steelers, not that great of a football team. I I don't think they're that good. Uh, somehow they won fifteen ten against the Browns because the Browns are another team that fucking confused me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they they, they got they got some injuries, injuries. but I mean, Baker is clearly a handicap to that team. I know he's going through two offensive linemen gone. Yeah, I I don't still though. Even with the injuries, I I I really don't know how. I mean, Steelers have a great defense though. They have a really great defense. Yeah, Um, I mean, but I mean, offensively, Ben Roethlisberger holds that team down. I like the Bears should not give up like more than twenty one points that team. Whether the Bears can score it, 21 or, or more, that's left to, you know, you would that's left in the air. But. I mean, yeah, it's going to be a tough week. I mean, I think if you lose next week, you pretty much uh, got three, to yeah, up the season. Three and, yeah, point. 100%. 100%. Which is, like, which is really unfortunate because obviously the trade deadline was today, right? right. But... Uh, <laughs> It is man. what it is. It is what it is. In all honesty. It is I mean, what it is. I feel like you have to have low expectations coming into this year anyway. I mean, you already knew Matt Nagy was going to hold this team back. Oh, yeah. You knew you are coming in with a rookie quarterback that was going to supplement Dalton anyway. I mean, and and we knew we had one of the toughest schedules in the league already. Right. Exactly. I mean, I, mean, I think we, I think we would have had, like, I think we had the third. The was it the or, toughest? Or, it was the or the, yeah, it was top three. It, I know sure. it was bare well, minimum top three. three. Yeah, yeah. So it, there was there was very slim chance for making it anyway, um, but yeah, this this game pretty much set the tone for what was going to happen the remainder of the year. And I think if we're that capable of losing to the 49ers like that, I don't see why another team would have really any issues. You know, at least pushing us all the way to the end. Oh, hundred percent. Team being better, so it's just like yeah. Got to take it with a grain of salt. This year, you shouldn't have had expectations going in. I mean, obviously, you get excited because of the, you know, the rookie quarterback, the the new, you know, hot commodity. But, you know, so many people just get, like, what's the word? They get, like, filled with hope because of those, like, high draft picks, especially when it's... Well, like, yeah, I, I think it's just... 
I think it's just tough that like you have to have expectations though when like you know when the Bears go about it the way they do where we don't have a draft pick we're still one of the oldest teams in the league it's right. like you know I mean you, like to some degree like you gotta have expectations you right. know because I mean there's really nothing else to, yeah, to like play for committing, yeah they weren't committing to a rebuild they were kind of you know mailing it as though it's like ready to go but clearly that's not the case i will say though um, what has been keeping me interested this year with how you know uh brutal this bear season has been frustrating i'm not gonna lie uh <laughs> doing like the you know the spreads and, and parlays and shit like that dude i i've been i've been glued to my television with any football is on Every Monday night, every Thursday night, and Sundays from noon to 10 p.m., I am glued to my television with this shit, dude. I'm, I'm like, so invested. My fantasy team has taken a shit, though, because that was, like, four weeks. Now four and four. Dude, this, past yeah. week, this past week was terrible. Let's, let's just, <laughs> I, I, I just, I just want to go on a rant really quick here. Okay, I like, the one, Bears lose to the 49ers. Brutal fucking game. I couldn't hit a single bet. Didn't I couldn't literally couldn't hit a single one. I do you know what you know what bet I was actually pretty confident in? An upset I was feeling really good about. And then they actually just got blown out of the fucking water. It was the Lions. I actually felt I, I had money on their spread against the Eagles. Because I'm like, you know what? They're go, they're gonna win a game this year. I, I think they're going to. At least going oh, into man. that game into that game yesterday, I hundred percent thought that they were gonna win a game this year. And the Eagles are not that great of a team that I'm like, they like the Lions could definitely do this. Hundred percent they can win this game. And then they just got absolutely destroyed. And I'm like, what in the world? Like I I, I checked the box score and I see like forty to nothing. And I'm like, what? I just don't even know. Also, Lions get a Lions, baby. Other side rant. This, these spreads sometimes make no sense to me. I don't. I don't. Uh, how the Chiefs are listed as fav? Did you see my tweet about this today? Yeah. How are the Chiefs I mean. listed as favorites against the Packers after the Packers in, a, in an incredibly depleted offense, they just went and beat an undefeated Cardinals team on a short week, and they're listed as underdogs to the fucking Chiefs who barely beat a Giants team last night, 20 to 17 and struggled. Mahomes sucks by the way. <laughs> Guy is dude. He's, uh, he's definitely hurting, that's for sure. Dude, he is he's bad. Like genuinely. I'm not even trolling at this point anymore. Like you watch his you watch his throw, dude, he's chucking the ball everywhere. Like he got bailed out on a bad interception on a lucky offsides call that it made it come back. But like this dude is just chucking the football everywhere, man. I, I like I don't even. It's yeah, bad. That whole team's in disarray right now. It's, that it, defense is miserable. And yet that... somehow they're listed as favorites like every week. Makes no sense to me. But they squeak uh, them out somehow when they when they're when they're in that situation. But beats I mean, me it is happens. it is plus one. So obviously yeah, it's like man. you know still though, still right. Um. Dude, I, I mean, in terms of, <laughs> you know what, you know what gave me like a fucking heart attack though. Look, it seemed Ryan Nall get touches. Oh. <laughs> Dude, I... Ryan Nall. Do you remember when he gave? Remember when Nat, Matt Nagy gave Ryan Nall touches in a playoff game? Yeah. Was that last year? That was last year, right? Against the Saints. Last year. Yeah. Ryan Nall, fourth string running back. Hey man, he's a uh, he's <laughs> Oregon State legend, man. Uh, Oregon State legend, dude, unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, I I don't even know why that man's on the roster. To be honest with you, yeah, I don't really know. I probably because Tariq Cohen's hurt. That's really yeah. I th I think there's, if Tariq Cohen's healthy, he's probably you, not on the roster. You can't tell me that there's not someone sitting on their couch that isn't better than Ryan Nall, even if dude, they are. Which is unfit. incredible. Yeah, I feel like he's been here for a while too. He's been here for 2018. He we who is, him as a yeah. Rookie. Who is like whose friend in the organization is he? Like <laughs> nah, dude. whose dude, son he's... is he? That's like friends with Ryan Pace. 
that is like, hey, can you can you get Ryan on the team? <laughs> nah, dude. Him and, him and Virginia got a thing. That's the only uh, reason he's dude. kicking around, oh bro. My God. I just like I'm like uh, Ryan doll. Oh, anyway. I'm good for him. I mean he's, yeah, he's good for him. His, good for him. Making his living. He's he's good doing for his him. thing. He's making made like a million bucks, you know, sitting on the bench doing nothing. Except oh, getting yeah, a couple right. touches getting here. Touches. Yeah. Getting touches. That's all that matters, man. Uh, you know. Good for yeah, him. He's he's something all right. I just yeah, I never never understood that one. Like all I know is that there was um there was a couple throws that Fields made. One in particular I remember to Marquise Goodwin on like a third and six or something like that. Dude, there there's just times I I'm, I remember I used to like feel this way with Jay Cutler because man Jay Cutler, he can make some throws, dude. Dude, Jay Cutler's the man. He he can make some fucking throws. Say what you want about Jay Cutler, but that dude had probably I, I like I'm dead serious. He probably had one of the best arm talents that's ever existed in the oh, NFL. Dude, he had he had the strongest arm in the oh, NFL. Oh, he he had like the strongest arm. There was not easily. a throw he couldn't make. He was just a complete you know not give Shuck a fuck it. at all. <laughs> Like ever <laughs> type of personality. Oh, man. So, but man, there's dude, there's some there's some throws that Fields make that I'm just like, ooh, ooh, Dude's that's pretty, good. that's pretty. I mean, you know, he he's not putting up these massive stat lines. And no, like, you know, no Which, one should expect that. I'm and not like, sure. I'm not sure if a Bears quarterback is ever going to be capable of doing that. I'm going to be real with you. Hey. You know, one one day, I mean, if if the Cubs can pull it out after 108 years, there's got to be at least one little shred of hope that we can get a quarterback to throw for more than 4,000 in a season. When was the last time we've had a... The Jay threw for 4,000 yards in a season, right? Do you want me Did to bring he? some bad news to you? No! We've never had a 4,000-yard quarterback. Wait. I'm, I ain't shitting you. I think we're the only franchise in the NFL. That's actually incredible. You know, I really would have thought Jay would have thrown for 4,000 one year, but... Got, the year he was on pace to do so, he ended up getting hurt. So. Oh, right, naturally. Yeah, yeah. Naturally. I mean, we had the, the the lovely Jamarcus That's... Webb. Oh, and, uh, yeah, Jamarcus Webb. I rem yeah, I remember him. I remember the nice little box out yeah. church bump that he tried to give. That was, that was his <laughs> technique, man. Use the backside to protect the quarterback. I <sighs> that man ended up sticking the lead for like six or seven years you know too, bouncing crazy? around. Dude, four thousand yards. I mean, that's a good season, but that's not even like not in the day's game. No. What's crazy I mean, is like you know Drew Brees would throw five thousand yards in a season in his sleep. Right. Right. Matthew Stafford would again, throw five thousand yards in a season. Yeah. Pretty easily in throw. fucking Detroit. Like sixty yard, sixty passes a game. Well, I mean, so like yeah, Drew's but I don't fucking care. I do that. Yeah, it's Drew Brees. Like, you know. yeah, I hear that. Cares. You know who actually like, was really impressive though, outside of Fields, hmm. freaking Larry Borum, dude. That you know, dude was well, here's the actually thing. Actually, a stud. He 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 played his matchup pretty damn well. And you you know what I think is important with offensive linemen when you don't know that they're playing. That's a good thing, to be honest with you. Like when you right. don't when you don't notice something. Honestly, that that's a good thing to me, because yeah, obviously absolutely. I'm not like I'm not looking, like I was. I mean, I was paying attention to Larry Borum. I was like, I knew he was playing, but like obviously I'm I'm looking at other things. I'm looking at fields. I'm looking at throws. Blah blah blah. Like obviously I'm not gonna like unless I went back and rewatched games. I'm not gonna sit there and look at the fucking right tackle, right? So, but like when I don't even notice, like you know, if he's not getting beat or he doesn't give up a big play or whatever like that, if if I don't really notice that he's in, that's a good thing in my eyes, right? Right. Which was 100% the case in that game and hasn't been for, I don't know, quite pretty much uh, quite some, yeah, Oof. like the entire season. Oh, God. You know? Who, I don't even remember his name from the week prior. Oh. We pulled. Oh, uh, yeah, name on the tip of my tongue. I don't know why I'm fucking forgetting now. Yeah, replaced by Bars, Anderson, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 you know what you're talking about. Feel bad for the guy though. Put in a terrible situation. Not really his fault. Right. Didn't no, even practice that week, but you know. You Interesting. Know. Honestly though, looking at it now, I mean, yeah, we're kind of up uh up Shites Creek, if you will, <laughs> with with what we're we're working with this year. But there are some young budding talent. On you the do roster. you watch that show, by the way? 
Oh, she's Creek. It's yeah. okay. Yeah, I watched it with uh with my girlfriend. Mm. It, was, it was solid. Yeah, she enjoyed it a lot. And she was real, <laughs> real into it. You know, it's not my. Speed, it has but... its moments. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Braves just won the World Series, by the way. Um, so thank you, Atlanta. Thank you, Atlanta. On behalf of everyone in the United States except Texas, thank you very much. Um, make sure to have one for us. Yep. <laughs> make it two because we need an extra strong one this week. <laughs> I, I forgot we played. You know, oh, dude, you know what's sad? We played Monday. We played Monday night, but the uh, we're not gonna have Peyton or Eli. You know, they're on a bye they're, week. They're, this, they were looking at their schedule. Very fitting. Two, yeah, they're, they're like, going, oh, Bears, Steelers. Yeah, there's going to be about seven points scored in that game. <laughs> Fuck off. No, I'm not. To, and yeah, we're not doing that game. Right. That's, they're like, we're going golfing. Yeah, we're going golfing. <laughs> we're going golfing. We don't. We Yeah, we're, we're Bears fans. We don't get fun guests and funny stuff happening. And they're going to go watch their nephew uh, figure out which school he's going to. Dude. That's what's going to happen. Okay, you know what's funny about Archie Manning, though? Every single time I... Like, I, maybe this is just, like, TikTok or whatever. I don't know. But Archie every... Dog, bro. Every single time I see highlight videos, like, highlight clips come up on TikTok, that'll be, like... It, it'll it'll first mention, like... uh, Because, like, you know, people have, like, said that he's going to be the best out of the Manning brothers. Right. Yeah. Or whatever. Um like he I always see highlights of him just running. I don't ever see highlights of him actually throwing the ball. Uh, dude, he if you go actually like search out legitimate highlights, dude, they're just it's not even fair. It's it's straight up. I just, mean I mean hell. I mean he, 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 I'd imagine I'd be a pretty damn good quarterback if I had Payne and Eli around me all the time. Oh, if, if I if I was in the Manning family. Father. Your yeah. grandfather's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, and, your grandfather's a Hall know, of Famer, and you know, yeah. Peyton Manning's the second best quarterback of all time, pretty much. And uh, Hall of Famer and Cooper. Eli's won a couple. Eli's won a couple Super Bowls, couple Super Bowls, yeah. and yeah. he's literally yeah. like the run to the family. Right. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. like it's incredible. Like, you know, like it, it's you know, imagine Probably being Eli Manning. Imagine being Eli Manning. If you if you grew up in your life in your family and you won a couple Super Bowls, you would be looked upon like a fucking star. But Eli Manning. He's like he's an afterthought at a family party for the Mannings, right. <laughs> which is incredible. Right. <laughs> it's incredible. I, you know, easily best football legacy family. Easily. Oh yeah, There's it's no, not. Yeah, not yeah. even close. Otherwise, but yeah, no, that's what they're gonna be doing on Monday instead of watching our uh, our shit our fucking game. Yeah, that's gonna slapped. be. The Bears are listed six and a half. Do you like that? You think they? No. <laughs> no. no. No, I. At this point, I have very, very low confidence in yeah. the team being able to put out any offensive production. Um, nothing to say against Fields. It's not, not know, his fault. Plus, Maggie's nope. coming back, so. Yep. I mean, you know, it's going to be a really weird week at Hellas. And it's going to be a little long week. They're going to have him back. They're going to have that whole. Do you think like oh. this makes it so? I mean, the Bears firing a head coach mid year is just like not going to happen. But like. God, I wish they would. I feel like this, would this be the one situation where it just might happen? Where it's like, you have him out of COVID. I mean, the Bears didn't win the game. But it was it was, sure. it was was obvious to everybody that the offense looked different. And it yeah, was it, it was better. Just that. It was the game was managed better. Yeah. There wasn't random yeah. timeouts. There wasn't like, just the little things that right. you notice that Nagy like. Ball starts coming almost, out of timeout. Right, like he he almost plays himself, if that makes sense. It's, yep. He overthinks things to the point where it causes problems. Yep. That's exactly who he is. I mean, I mean, it's like, do you think it's even possible that, you know, we have that week with with him gone, he comes back, and there's an obvious regression again to the offense? Do you think there's any chance? Oh yeah. Absolutely. That you'd be fired? I think, well, not only that, but there's there's going to be this little bit of, like, tension, I would imagine, in the locker room when, you know, you just had that kind of game last week where, yeah, you lost, but there was, you know, obvious differences in the tempo of how the game was yeah. played, just the efficiency. Like, you actually were able to go beyond, you know, three and out consistently yeah. with your game plan. And then now you're supposed to be welcome arm to a guy who you probably have very 
big trust issues with at this point at this many years in. And, you know, I, I don't see how this week you're going to have any more than yeah, like I 200 mean, yards of offense. That's I mean, like, if he doesn't already, if he hasn't already lost a locker room, which I feel oh, like he already has, yeah, but I, I like, that would be an awkward moment. <laughs> right, like that, that's right. just like the awkward situation that you would be in as a team where you get a you know you have one week away you clearly play better have he comes freedom. back yeah and then you regress again because like i mean at some point you gotta like i mean really you know if you're ryan pace even or you know just mccaskies or whatever like your your entire priority for the rest of the season should be the development of Justin. You have to right. do what's best for Justin. 100%. Right? And, like, if you have a situation where, like, you clearly improve one week and, and Nagy being gone and then you bring him back and there's clearly regression and maybe, you know, maybe you... Because, I mean, again, the 49ers are a good team. Like, a very, very good defense. Well, not good team. I, I don't think they're a very good team. But, like, good defense. Defensively speaking, they're very good. They get pressure on the quarterback. Now, I know you had Borum. Nick, you, you had Borum here. Just, uh, yeah, Nick Bosa's fucking... But like, like obviously, that, yeah, Borum. That's family number two. That's family. Oh yeah, that's two yeah, 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 yeah. Or the Watt family. Yeah, the Watt family is pretty good. Um, yeah, pretty good. <laughs> but uh, like, I mean, Fields Fields didn't take many shots. At least, at least not as many shots as he has been. I mean, he's the most sack quarterback in the NFL by a pretty good margin. Right. But like, even even not taking sacks, I mean, he takes a lot of hits. I mean, he gets pressured all the time. I mean, if you have like. You know, if you have a situation against the Steelers, again, where it's like he's running for his damn life out there all the time, and maybe, you know, maybe he doesn't. I, I think, like, I think the obvious difference is just making the play with his feet. Because right. it, it, yeah. like, it feels like this week he, like we, like we said earlier, it felt like he had training wheels on before, and, like... The, They're gonna get put back on them. That's the yeah. Problem. Well, that the, like that's the thing. Like they were they were taken off clearly. Like Laser this week was allowed to just fully like do what he wanted to do without Nagy in his ear, and he allowed Justin to to go and be the best athlete on the field. And now if Nagy comes back and like he clearly puts those training wheels back on, and and it seems like Fields doesn't want to run and stuff like that, then it's like it's you gotta like you just have to think what's best for your quarterback going forward development right you have to yeah, get I mean, it was pretty evident i mean he had 10 carries that game like what what game prior this year did he have any yeah, more they like were five? they were they were talking about that um they had mentioned it was going into the game he had eight total in five starts eight total design run plays right for an athlete like justin fields that's fucking absurd right. like that that is absurd like it's it's not even like that you know that's not even like saying he had like eight whatever like uh I, I don't know eight like just designed plays that's it it doesn't matter how much it like went for or whatever just simply a designed play for him to run only eight of them that's that's absurd like i don't i don't know for for an athlete like him, that's just that's just ridiculous. And then obviously you have ten carries this week, like, and he goes for one of the best touchdowns I've ever seen. To be honest with you, yeah. I mean, that that was Vic ask, bro. I mean, that was the the caliber. Oh, dude, of so, that was. It was I mean, so easily, good. It was so easily. good. So good. And yeah, I mean, I don't I don't see how you can go back and say, yeah, this is right. Let's let's prevent him from doing that moving forward. Because, no, yeah, I, don't, I don't, I and I don't think you can do that. Like, and I, I think, I think John Harbaugh, um, going into, like, with Lamar, I think there was a point in time where he did kind of do that, sure. where he did try to hold Lamar back from from running so much and and taking those kind of hits, and he tried to get him to stick in the pocket a little bit more, and now he's fully bought into, you know what. Lamar, go be the best let athlete on the field. Run. Yeah, go, go, go be the best thing. athlete on the field. And, like, is, is would that result in a shorter career? Probably. Probably. 
will you have the best chance to win a Super Bowl when him doing that? Absolutely. Like, yeah. and, and with Justin, like, that, that's a part of his game, dude. That's a part of his game. You can't, right. like, th- that would just be, that would just be so stupid to take a guy that, you know, can run a 40 as fast as he can, can, like, the, the, dude, what gets me is the acceleration, man. The acceleration he has to get to full speed so quickly is just, and the change of direction and how quickly he's able to do that is just, it's incredible. Like, it would just be absurd to not use that. And f- I, he's got a great arm. But just to only use the arm would just be dumb. Like I, you know, I I don't I don't like I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. I mean it's uh pretty cut and dry though. This week's kind of the the big uh pendulum swinging turning point, the fork in the road, if you will, and sets the tone for the rest of the year. I mean, that's just what it comes down to. It's yeah, I mean, you know, we've had We've, it's just it's been this way for a couple weeks you know it, where it's it's these type of games that like feel like are winnable and there's just I don't know little little things little things that are frustrating that yeah. uh, you know again wide receivers dropping passes, causing interceptions, not holding on to a yeah. ball to convert a third and six, stuff like that. You know, just, just little things like that. It's, um, it is what it is, but you know, you know I, I, I'm going to say mm. I'm very disappointed in our wide receiving core this year. Oh, severely dude. Like going into the season, that wasn't a position that I actually no. had concern about. No, but not now, at all. Not at dude, all. It's, it's just Mooney. Like, not at all. That's, well, that's the only player. Here's we the other thing, the though. I, I, I think like to give them a little slack. One, I don't think they're put into great positions to have success. No. No. Two, two. They didn't get reps with Fields in training camp for whatever yeah, reason. That's true. You know, which now, granted, I mean, I, to what we understand, like Mooney didn't really get reps with Justin either. But yeah. They got a connection enough. I mean, if I was if I was Bill Lazor, I'd have Jesse James on the field like every play, practically yeah. over Cole Komet right. because Jesse James and Fields got reps all the fucking time in camp. Right, and, and that, that's why Jesse James end. got the touchdown. Like, I mean, he knows, like those two, they already had they have that connection in some way. Like these other guys are having to build what you should have built in training camp now. You know. Yeah. But yeah. still, I mean, clearly you, Robinson and him are just right, so right. Far yeah, the no, they they are but, they they clearly do not like just they they don't align and um you know again I th- you know it'd be better if they had reps but like I mean, still guys like Goodwin, Bird, Perriman, I don't even know who the fuck that guy is. Guys sitting on the bench. Bro. Yeah, I like these guys we added. I I thought our wide receiver core was going to be deep, dude. I, I thought it was going to be deep. We're going to have a lot of speed. And now we even traded for uh, Grant Sr. Jakeem, yep, Jakeem Grant. Which he's fucking fast as hell. I mean, yeah, why, can't, why can't we do things like literally, I mean, Matt Nagy you came from Andy Reid. Why don't you take an Andy Reid play like once and do a freaking uh, jet sweep with either Grant or Goodwin because both of them are fast as hell or Mooney D- or, yeah, or Mooney even Creek. yeah or yeah yes. or Mooney and just just do a jet sweep like Casey does with with Tyree Kill all the time I like it, and, but the th- and the thing is we don't even like it's it's different if you try it and it doesn't work but it's like we're done we don't even try it like we don't no. we don't even do it and like he doesn't do anything with his motions. Like, you know, that's that's one thing that you always kind of saw is, when every is, single announcer is like, oh, yeah, the so motion right. to identify the defense. That I'm is like, yeah, so like, right, dude. All he does is motion to determine if that's, it's in man or zone coverage. Exactly. Like, he that's why, it. He doesn't, that's why the Chiefs have been so good the past couple of years is like, you know, you had, you had, they would have people in motion all the time. You have Tyree Kill going in motion. You have Travis Kelsey even going in motion all the time. And they would right. they would switch things up and they'd do fucking different shit all the time. And it's like, you know, in the Saints do that really well, too. And they got Kamara, you know, moving around a bunch. And, then, and Michael Thomas gets back, and he moves around in motion and stuff like that. And they do these different things. But it's like with the Bears, guy goes in motion. Okay. 
Yeah. Watch, just watch him go over. Like, I don't know. It's not going to, it's not going to fucking matter. Like, he, he, they honestly, I honestly feel like most of these guys and they motion, they just motion to the flat and sit there as like the, the check town guy. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. Like, the, yeah. Like, what's the point? Like, you know, that's going to come every play. So why do you even, well, it just feels like there's no, um, there's like, there's, there's a difference in the way people, like when I watch Tyree kill go in motion, I almost like I would always compare it to when Steph Curry is on a basketball court without the ball. One right. of the, one of the you, things that you have to be conscious of it. But it's like well, like one thing that Steph Curry does better than anybody is that like he's always moving, right? And because Steph Curry, Steph Curry, you have to be conscious of where he's at on the floor at all times because he can he can make any shot and he has you know he gets the ball a second later it's in the fucking hoop right he, and he's one of the probably the best. I mean, he's the best shooter of all time, but also, like, off the dribble or off the, uh, you know, the pass, like, he's just, he's so good. You have to be conscious of where he's at all the time. And moving off screens and stuff like that, he's, he's so good with it. And Tyree Kill, there's just a different, I feel like there's a different, like, approach and energy that he brings when he goes in motion. Or he, he actually, like, draws the defense because he, well, yeah, it, it's you know, he he commands that attention because the, you, there's a possibility that they're going to give him the ball, whereas our guys never have right. that. It's, it's like when he goes in motion, if he's like going in motion from the, like the right side of the field to the left, when he when he like kind of crosses that middle area, there's like, there's a way that in his body language, it kind of like, he, com- he almost like fakes, like he, he fakes the, the yeah, it. like, yeah, and like he fakes as if they're going to give him the ball in that middle spot. And then he fakes like other things, and and the and teams have to respect it because they fucking do it. Like so, they you know they know these plays can happen. Like with the right, Bears, right. Bears it with your like linebacker, and that yeah. puts him off side, so then your tight end can get underneath or you know, things like that. And like just when Cole Komet goes in motion, or any tight end goes in motion, and and flips from one side of the line to the other, it's just like it's like you're literally just wa- you're you're watching him just get up, walk, and line up on the other side. Like, like there's no not, he just uses him as a run block like he just exactly the, the yeah, exactly side of the offense and it's like what's the point it's like you just flip the play on madden that's literally like uh, it's all you're doing like, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it, you know i don't know you got like you gotta use guys like goodwin guys like grant where you just you have the threat of speed like that just fucking just do it, and the dude. lack of yeah. using it just goes and shows that he doesn't have confidence in his players to do those things. Well, that or, is, is, I just, I'm confused why you signed them. Right? Why would you go out and acquire these players if you don't want to utilize? It's the same thing. Talent? It's the same thing with Jimmy Graham. Why do we have him if you're not going to? Jimmy Graham is one of the best fucking red zone tight ends that's ever played the game. Right. And we just don't even like. Was he even on the field? No, you know, he's not, not, he's not even on the field. That's why I'm like, I'm just, I don't know. Like, literally, if you're not, even if you don't even plan to throw it to him, he's Jimmy Graham. If you're in the red zone and Jimmy Graham is on the field, the other team has to notice that. Like, they're gonna respect that because he's fucking Jimmy Graham. Like, right. it's like, it's like, it's not, this isn't that hard, you know? It's it, right. like, if you just need to be a decoy, that's fine. But, like, a decoy is yeah. better than nothing. You know what even else kills me too? The fact that, you know, we put so much emphasis over that offseason where we had 12 fucking tight ends to our team, right? We had yeah. 12 tight ends or something signed to our team at one point because the Matt Nagy offense really utilizes tight ends. Well, the way I see it is he doesn't run a two tight end set ever for a rookie quarterback who could benefit from having two tight ends set not only as like a safety net type of you know catch but also the fact that they could be utilized in the run game like you would know your guys getting hit consistently because of your line so why don't you put the extra blocker help him help dude help that's what like you know again i forget what's his name you know what his name is but like in this situation last week like you know like this dude hasn't he hasn't even practiced this week. Right. He didn't practice. And you're asking him two hours before the game to go in. And you're having him go one-on-one? You're not even like... It should be a focal point in your offense, right. in your game plan, just to recognize, hey, you got a fourth-string right tackle. Let's give him some help. Right. And not only that, one-on-one, <laughs> like, not with just like a no-name pass rusher. Like, it's Shaq Barrett. Right. It's 
you know, it's it's these really strong defensive line that's in Tampa, like Vita Vea. Just, like, there's so much threats there. That's like, dude, you're clearly so disconnected with what is going on yeah. and like how to adapt well, your team. It's just ridiculous. I feel like there, like you know, like we said before, there there is a game plan that he has in mind when he goes into the game, and he does not want to adjust like at all. No. There is a, it's like he prints out a script for the game, and no matter what happens, he's going to stick yep. to the script. No matter what. Fucking Khalil Herbert could run for 100 yards in one drive on the opening drive of the game, and he'd have Damian Williams out there next drive yep. getting five plus carries <laughs> in for a single drive. Yardage. Yeah. Yep. Like it's, you know, like I remember Adam, Adam Hogue tweeted that this past game. Uh, actually, it was like, imagine thinking, like, imagine watching Khalil Herbert and thinking that Damian Williams needs more touches. <laughs> like, yeah, that's I don't, logical. Like, it just makes no sense. Yeah, I, I'm just, uh, at this point, biding the time until we see him, you know, walked out of Hallis Hall, because it's going to happen. I don't think that we see him stick around regardless of if they make the playoffs or not i yeah I mean, yeah no, no no you you look at matt or you look at uh lovey smith who came off of a you know a winning season and still got right can right like i think i still think pace sticks around though i do too and i actually i'm, okay I'm actually that. fine with him sticking around too 100 mm-hmm. um I think he knows how to identify enough young talent later yeah. rounds that way it, it can be sustainable he he, he can like he built a roster Right. He, he built a roster that was capable and he could do 100%. it again. So. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the one guy I will always advocate for because I truly think that man with what he's been working with top five gym. I mean, yeah, he made, he made a bad call on the coach, but like, look how many head coaches carousel every year. Right. You know, like, yeah, you know, it, bad on him. That sucks. It's unfortunate. But at the end of the day, the dude has hit on, Four out of his eight picks, and two of those picks are unknowns in the second round between, um, you know, Tevin Jenkins and the, uh, oh God, what's his name? Can't think of the other other guy we got in the second round. This uh, this past year, I think so. Didn't we have two? We might have. Vildor. Vildor's a fifth round guy. Either he's way, later. I yeah. mean, I know he's had, I know he's had um, eight second round picks over his yeah, tenure, yeah. and I mean. Dude, I mean, Goldman, Whitehair, Daniels, yeah. like, um, yeah, there's just his his quality of draft pick beyond the first round is just so it's it's elite. That dude's talent evaluation is so deep, so thorough. And quite frankly, like, I don't think there's another GM that even sniffs, sniffs close to his talent. Like, yeah. I'm doing that. No, I mean, the things that like. I will always be critical of Ryan Pace for like signing Mike Lennon. Sure. Um, and and I know a lot of people like to be critical of picking Mitch. The only thing I'll be critical about with Mitch is the trade up. That's it. The 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 trade really, the trade up was unnecessary. I, that, I honestly think the trade up was even overblown. If you go look at like the actual picks that were given, he didn't even sacrifice the first round pick for the next year. So like there was nothing like lost in the future years. You mm-hmm. already had gone and traded for Khalil Mack. And the pick that you traded with your the second round or whatever it was, you traded back anyway and recovered a pick to basically compensate for it. So it only ended That's up true. being like the equivalent of like a third or a fourth to move up a spot. And like, yeah, you know, like maybe that seems a little steep for one spot, but at the end of the day, it's like if you were really set on that guy. And that was like a quarterback. That's your big pick. right, like, and that's yeah. And there's you know like, chance he, that they take him. Yeah, right. Like e- even if it isn't you know San Francisco taking him, like who's to say San Francisco is like, hey dude, I got two other guys in the call that are offering me first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like and yeah. you know, you can't you can't risk it. Like they're moving back one spot. They don't care. They still get their guy. They have the still the same basic draft position. Right. So it's like, yeah. I don't know. I think that whole situation just got overblown simply because of the immediate success of Watson and Mahomes, but they were also put in like situations that were oh, much just significantly more better. Advantageous. I mean, like yeah, that's the other thing too. It's like okay, you know what? If Mitch is that bad of a pick, like 
Dude, is, he went like he went to a Pro Bowl. He's a Pro Bowl quarterback. He's Mitch is a genuinely average quarterback. Like I would say, yeah. he he could go and probably start on at least ten teams this year. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I, I mean, you easily put him over Washington, and and I think he made the right decision, knowing that he could elevate himself into a better contract year after mm. after oh going time, to buffalo actually. with with brian dable was yeah no, i know that that's a, a five head move dude. yeah 100%. that move was 40 chess all day on his part and yep. his team and i think he realized that like i think mitch is a smart dude mm. i don't think people realize like that guy knows what he's doing like yeah it kind of looked really bad here just because of how chicago media like villainizes everything that isn't working yeah but at the end of the day dude like He's Pro Bowl quarterback. He's has some of the best like completion percentages in Bears history. If not like, I mean, his completion percentage for his career is fantastic. Like, yeah, the guy you know has. He isn't gonna like push you over the top. He isn't gonna be an Aaron Rodgers. He isn't gonna be a you know top five guy who you can like rely on to like carry you through a game. But you can win with him, man. Like, he's a guy you can win with. Right, right. No, you absolutely can't. And that's why, dude. You need to go to Steelers. Easy. You need to go to Steelers. Like, that's, that'd be the perfect place for him. Right. I mean, dude, I even think he would have been good in Carolina. Like, Oh, I think so, too. Carolina would have been fine. I mean, better. I he's guaranteed a better quarterback than Sam Darnold. Better yeah. quarterback than anyone on the Jets. I mean, better than two of them. I don't know, dude. Mike I'd White, that have... guy. <laughs> Mike F. Mike, White, bro. Mike White, bro. This guy, this guy goes in, throws for 400 plus yards. A, a you good got team too. Like, that's against a, a good team. Bengals team. You got the fucking stadium cheering your name. Goodbye, Zach Wilson. <laughs> dude, what a waste! Of a pick, dude. Dude, uh, yeah, I, I, I never understood why he was. I don't even. Yeah. One thing I want to talk about very quickly though, before we wrap up here, this is not about the NFL at all. Did you see the college football rankings? No. I, I'm okay. I'm, I'm not going to be really disappointed. I'm probably. I think really it depends. I this like I just this is why I hate college football. This AP is. Polls? They they did the first playoff ranking today, the official like the first official playoff ranking. I the biggest I don't notable have a problem with it. You don't. I absolutely have Dude. a problem with it. Here's the I problem. Know. Since he had six, since he had six is absurd. Oh, this have, is why I have it. Oh, I have my AP poll here. Let's since he had two. Oh no, they're no the official ranking. They they were dropped to six. The top five is one Georgia, two Alabama, three. Oh, uh, okay. Yep, I see this one here now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the AP poll. I was what I was looking yeah. at. This is yeah. the the one from the NCAA. Gotcha. Yeah. They they dropped since he to six. This is like this is my problem with this. You can't like remember when it was UCF before. Now I just to, UCF didn't even deserve to be top ten. No, one Cincy is a much better team than UCF ever was. Sure. Two. But do you think Cincy beats Alabama? No. In ten in ten games, they don't even they probably don't beat them once. To be honest with you, maybe not. Maybe not. However. No. The problem is that you literally had them two. They're ranked number two. You can't like th- this is this is my problem in college football, is if you have a rank, okay, if you're a top four team, especially like top three, top two, whatever, okay. If you don't lose, there's no reason you should lose your rank. There's no reason you should like be lowered in the ranks. If you are number two. And you win your games each week. You don't lose a game. They can't control who they play. What are they? What are they going to do? Not beat their opponent? Like what? Do you, what do you yeah. expect them to do? If you don't God, lose, their awful. oh, it's it's bad. But like they can't control that. And the problem is like if you the, the reason why you're in this pro like why it's a problem is because you had them ranked number two. If you didn't have them ranked number two, if you just simply had them floating around like the five, six, or whatever, and then you came out with this, that'd be fine. But when you have them as your top two teams, they don't lose, and then you do this? That's just fucking absurd. That's just dumb. 
That's dumb. I don't care yeah, what team it is. It could have been, it could be Cincinnati, it could be Alabama, it could be whatever. If you have, you know, a top team like that ranked and they don't lose, they should not be lowered at all. Yeah, that's the way that these people do these these rankings. It's is... made college football boring. Because it's the same handful of teams every year. It's incredibly biased. And, like, I understand. Like, and I, I don't disagree with you at all. Since he plays Alabama 10 times, probably lose all 10. They play George 10 times, probably lose all 10. But you know what? Like, one, I know it's really hard in football to have, like, a Cinderella story. It, it's It's not like basketball. Basketball is a game where talent can easily be more distributed across like smaller universities and stuff like that. Right. But like you just can't you can't be doing this where it's you have a university like this that take care that takes care of business year like you know week in week out. You rank them high and then when it gets to the time of the year where you have this playoff system and you just throw them out the gutter even when, you know, they haven't they haven't done anything to zer- to deserve that at all right i mean do you know it it's the money behind it that's that's what it comes oh, 100%, 100%. down to 100 percent. i mean georgia alabama they're gonna sell you tickets they're gonna get better ratings ohio state again ratings oregon big market team like cincinnati in the grand scheme of things if i put cincinnati anywhere in this ranking i wouldn't i honestly wouldn't even put them above like auburn I know that's like terrible to say. Auburn's no, I, and I don't see the, and I don't like, just, I don't necessarily disagree because like it's just there's if people don't understand how much of a difference like football is with, with a power five school versus like Alabama's third stringers are going to be practically better than your number ones at Cincinnati. Right. Like it's just that's just how it your is. True the, freshman like, at Alabama who's like, stuck with a red shirt yeah. right after that year is going to be a starter on that team. Exactly. Like, they like pull it's, five stars. Like that's all they pull. It's, you know, like, think about it. Like, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields are on the same, right. uh, he, like, they were at the same right. university at one point. Joe Burrow was at the same university as, uh, um, before he went to LSU. Where where was he at before? I forget. Uh, he, went, he went to Ohio uh, State. Ohio State, yeah, Ohio yeah. State. yeah. Fucking Ohio State just have everybody. Um, like, <laughs> like, it's just, you know, these schools, they have, like, the, the transfer portal is what happens. But it's like these... You know, these schools, they get everybody, and then maybe these guys transfer somewhere else to start. And, it, and even if they do transfer, it's to an LSU, or it's to a, you know, right. an Oklahoma, and even if they or, go you to know, a whatever. Small school, it's like they're the only talent that's transcendent on a roster of like two or three star Right. Players. Right. Like, yeah. I mean, like, I myself, you know, when I was going out of high school, I mean, I was no more than like a two star recruit. I wasn't getting, you know, the big name schools looking at me like sure maybe there was like a couple of like the lower and like big 10 schools back in 2000 oh god 2011 you're old (laughs) but i mean even then i mean i i would never have gotten playing time on those schools right right like yeah i would have been shuffled around like yeah i would have i started out to play d tackle and then they would have been like oh well you know you you really don't fit the mold of what we're looking for you go play offensive line or whatever it may be and then i just get buried on a roster when they sign the kid next year that's a you know exactly as a five star yeah 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 Yeah, Yeah. and like that's just kind of the the politics of it like and i don't blame them because clearly like they're ranked that way for a reason like those kids the way that those scouts and those analysts like evaluate high school kids is just like brutal dude oh absolutely it's like grueling absolutely like you know it's you'll you'll never see uh like a a perfect cincinnati they will never pull in more than maybe one five-star guy and that five-star guy is going to be there because he's a local kid who came out of high school who who's a stud and he wanted to stay close to home because he's going to be able to like have his family come right like that's typically the only way you're recruiting you're going to get someone like that i mean otherwise the other other schools they just i mean they can just offer so much more i mean it's not even portal to your future in the nfl like that's the difference like georgia alabama Oregon, Ohio State, they offer you a their, portal. Their Not backups the get NFL, drafted. They, you know, they offer like you a it's... portal to the first round. Yeah. That is the fucking difference right yeah. there. It's a difference between you getting a guaranteed contract for $1.2 million and a guaranteed contract for upwards of 
$20 million. Right. That's the difference when you go to a big name school. Like, you know, and I don't blame them. Like, you know, like, why would you want to go anywhere else? You know, like, why would you want to disperse your talent? Like, yeah, there was a situation. What was it back in like 2014 when Ole Miss ended up getting a bunch of five stars with like Kim Dichi, Laramie Tunsil and all that situation. Mm -hmm. But you've come to find out the reason that was because these coaches are paying off, you know, bagmen and yeah, 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 a bunch of cash incentives and things like and like, that's the thing, like, as much as I hate to say it, like, that's a really big reality. Like, these schools will go after the kids who, you know, need the money or whatever situation they're in. Oh, and that, I mean, that's, promise and things, and that's a whole just, other conversation. But, like, I mean, with the whole, I mean, college athletes need to be paid. College yeah, football players like, need to be paid. It, it, schools know that, like, the kids need the money. They can't, like, you, you know, the amount of time that you're having to spend practicing, stuff like that, in classes... There's yeah. absolutely, there's no chance in hell you can have a job. No chance. You, you need, like, you have no money. You need it. You're making the school millions and millions and millions of revenue. Yep. Um, I mean, like, can you imagine how much money Joe Burrow made LSU? Dude. Do you see a dime that of that? Guy. No. No. Obviously, his players, you know. His dad did. Oh, yeah, his dad did. That nice yeah. little Heisman bet of 500K, <laughs> yeah. 500K earnings. <laughs> um, but, yeah. You know, it, it's just like. System. I don't know, but I I still think like if I was a Cincinnati fan, I'd be pissed, obviously, and rightfully sure. so. I mean, since like the the NCAA put this on themselves when they have them ranked that high, but also what I think what fixes the entire issue is just simply expanding the payoff uh, playoff to eight. If you expand the uh if you expand the playoff to eight teams, that gives an automatic bid to you know big conferences, uh, big conference winners. That also like you know that allows you to sneak a team in like Cincinnati. You know. Right. Ah. And it's a little bit more yeah, you, like you doable. Do have to expand it. The you, problem, you know, teams, the problem with four, just... the four teams is just like it's so. There, like, there is no really room to to sneak in a team like that. It just bottlenecks you to your your top four exactly like, actually talented teams because, like, at the end of the day, like, are you gonna want to sit on and turn the TV to a blowout where Georgia is literally just. Which like fifty six points to on Cincinnati, and I'm pretty sure if you had an eight team playoff, and obviously you go, you know, one plays the eight, two plays the seven, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you do the classic format like that. I'm sure even if that even if that team that snuck in, even even if it was a Cincinnati and they were the eighth team, I'm sure people would be a hell of a lot more willing to accept and watch a blowout of that game. It being one versus an eight versus a one versus a four. Right. Or the one or two versus a three. Right. The biggest problem that I think the NCAA is going to cross with expanding its aid is simply the each individual conference. So like you got your big 10, your, you know, your big 12 SEC, their conference championships would be the things that get impeded. Right. You know what I mean? Like they, they, I mean, I don't know how much leeway they have, but I mean, their, their schedules are pretty set in stone with what every year, you know, with uh, the bowl game coming on New Year, so on and so forth. And, like, um, that would be the biggest challenge is, like, trying to basically pull away the ratings from your, you know, championship game because you're you're going to not have Alabama and Georgia. They're both going to be in the, the playoff. So then your, your championship game gets stuck with whoever the remaining is off of that. And, like, that's going to be the hardest sell. But, no, I agree. It definitely needs to expand to eight. I mean, shoot, if, if you could swing 16, man, I'd be... Uh, football would just... I mean, I'd be it fucking excited for it, but yeah, I mean, football is just it's too, too tough of a sport for that. Body. Yeah, yeah, and like... Yeah, it is. It is tough. Um, But yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying. I, I agree with you to an extent. It's just, it's really hard to convince me that Cincinnati's talent-wise is right, worth right. putting on TV. Yeah. That's all it comes down to. Yeah. And I just, again, you know, I like... Just don't, like... Just don't give the false hope to the players that are at Cincinnati, man. Yeah, you know it's like you're you're just playing with your feelings. And you're, Do you think you're, kid? Huh? Is you think that quarterback out of Cincinnati is any good? Fourth He's fourth okay. round, maybe. I spent a fourth round on him. Yeah. Dak Prescott this. Yeah. In terms of like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, Dak. Dak was a Mississippi State guy, like, you know. SEC school put up decent numbers. Yeah. yeah. That's the that would be the hardest sell. It was just the lack of talent. I mean, dude, his their schedule was cake. I mean, no yeah, offense. Like 
I think they play. I think they play like Tulsa or something this weekend. Right, <laughs> everyone that is in those programs, like Murray State, like sorry, Murray State, you know, you're not a top tier program, but yeah. good on you kids for putting in the work you do. But there's yeah. no chance that Cincinnati is going to lose. No. Um, Indiana, they've been on the downtrend for too many years at this point. Yeah. Notre Dame's always overblown. Yep. Temple's Temple, whatever. UCF is probably the best team that they had to play in terms of just like the way that they scout and the way that they bring in talent and like that was a blowout yeah. so like i don't know it was uh it was pretty much like the biggest cakewalk of a schedule and that forced it to and i don't know why they were even and again though it's like you know i, I mean they shouldn't it, like, even been top 15 that that's with the, the players though it's like i i feel for those guys though because you know obviously they can't control who they play all they all they can control is they go out there and blow out every single fucking team that they play and it's like Right. That's all yeah, they can they really do. The work, they bust their yeah. ass and like I'm not saying they don't. Absolutely. Right, no, of course. Like, those those guys in Cincinnati dude, keep doing what you're doing. Keep working hard. I yeah, mean, like go out there, whatever team you play, like you can't control who you play, just go out there, kick their ass. That's all you can really do. And they do that. Exactly. But you know, like it's you know, it's like at that point, it is what it is. I just feel right. bad I feel bad for them to the extent of like, you know, you had the high ranking and you feel like if you, you you feel like when you have that high of a ranking that like the the playoff berth is in your control, right? Like it's yours to lose. Like as long as you don't lose a game, you should be in it that way. And then it's just like stripped away from you like that when you didn't even deserve it. You know that like that as a player that would that would crush me personally. Yeah, but yeah, you know and that's the politics of the the NCAA. That oh, is for sure. Finest. I'll say that's that. That's why NCAA sucks. It's something. I anyway, bet. this was over an hour. This was a good one. We also this was a Bears post game. I don't even. Uh, it's, there's really this is, much this is yeah. The Bears, this is sadly. more like a general podcast at this point. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there's uh there's only so much you can talk about after a loss. There's only so much. Yeah, there's only there's only about. we can only complain about the same things happening every single week so many times. Right. And, <laughs> it's like you know, we we kind of know what's going to happen. Yeah, we we know what's going to happen next week too. It's going to be the same problem. Like unless the Bears change it up and give us something new to complain about, like I don't know. You know. Hey, you know what? Maybe we uh maybe we convert another tight end into like an offensive tackle or vice versa, you know, with the Sewell. That might be something exciting. Dude, honestly, to see. I don't know. I'm fucking here for it. Like, yeah, I'm gonna try I don't try it at this point, you know. I don't know. See if, Just- as long as we see, don't get Justin See if Jones. Justin can like kick a field goal or something. I don't know. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> like he, actually, no, he's probably no, athletic enough. Put that out there. I, uh, yeah, I actually, Santos. Santos is really like the best kicker in the league, though, dude. Yeah, I mean, he missed the yeah. he missed the extra point, but I don't even really care about that. Whatever. I mean, yeah. he that wasn't winning them or losing them the game. Yeah, but Santos, keep doing what you do. Best kicker we've had since Robbie Gold, and uh, I commend you for that one, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you listening. We'll be back next week with uh, probably more bullshit so and lots of malort <laughs> all right we'll see you guys